CD Projekt Red Workers and other Polish devs unionize under PGWU banner, Polish Game Dev uh, Workers Union. Uh, our mission as a union is to ensure job security, fair treatment, and transparency within our employer organization, which is the manifesto. We intend to achieve that by mutual support, education, and establishing equal communication with the employers as a strong voice for the workers' interests. Our goal is not to start a fight, but to have a dialogue. So this is not a, a strike that is happening, um, to be no. clear. It's just um, people are starting But if to... you're a big company, these are fighting words. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's going to cause a stir and has probably caused a stir in the like the the leadership of the company. Yeah, it's very know. good that they're unionizing, though, because um, there's a lot happening in, in Denmark that uh, companies are uh, rebelling against unionizing. And uh, yeah, and what they do basically is they leave unions and then they lower wages to just about what unemployment services are, but just like a dollar more yeah. so that people can't claim that they're not being paid fairly. Mm. so it's it's terrible and then obviously the working conditions get much worse yeah no the game development industry is definitely like an overlooked area it's because it is like it's not a new industry but it's like new ish right there hasn't been in countries where there hasn't been a strong union presence it's like the kinks haven't really been worked out and so mm. you have kind of problems like crunch to meet release dates and there aren't really any protections against those sorts of practices. So the Polish Game Dev Workers Union, uh, they have their own website, it's gamedevunion.pl. Kind of the wave of unionization at CDPR seems to have followed um, a, like a bunch of layoffs. It said like 9% of their total employees were fired or something like that. Yeah. 9% um, of CDPR's employees, roughly 100 people were let go. It would become they would become more agile and effective. <laughs> yeah. After being overstaffed, mm. sure. Yeah, it's interesting because CDPR is working on a lot of things right now. Like they just released Phantom Liberty, which is a huge expansion. They're also making a new Witcher trilogy, a Witcher remake, and they have a new IP they're working on, and they're making a sequel to Cyberpunk called Cyberpunk Orion. So oh. like they they are working on a lot of things. So it seems like maybe they need. A lot of developers but they're thinking nah we'll be fine <laughs> yeah we can just lay off 100 people no biggie because then of course the remaining workers will have to pick up the slack right they will have to do the work uh, you know everyone's yeah. gonna have to do the work of the two people i blame i blame apple for this apple was a company that when steve jobs came back he said that he wanted to treat it like the world's biggest startup company so yeah. he fired like a third of all employees at Apple, and then he just put everyone in small teams, and he overworked them all like crazy and micromanaged everyone. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, so many people were burned out and and quit, and uh, yeah, I, I, so many companies like it, uh, like Apple and and game devs um, copied it because it, Apple was so successful following it. I would say probably despite of it. We are an independent section within OSIP. Being part of a larger structure allows us to get their experience and support while staying independent with our goals and policies. So OSIP is is the commissioner of the Polish Game Dev Workers Union. They seem really cool. Um, they're like an anarcho-syndicalist trade union organization. And they, they kind of specialize in organizing people who work in industries that don't have already pre-established unions. Mm. Which is interesting because there's a Swedish anarcho-syndicalist trade union called uh, SAC, which basically does the same thing. They're like a catch-all union. OSIP seems uh, cool. They have a website as well. It's uh, osip.pl. They have like publications. They have uh, some stuff about anarcho-syndicalist theory. They have a bunch of like books and pamphlets and stuff that they've published. They seem they seem like a cool bunch. And yeah, you can um, send a donation. It seems like the only way to donate to them is to do like a bank transfer. You can like send bits and stuff on this stream and I can I can donate on your behalf, I guess. Oh, if yeah. A, if you live in a country where bank transfers aren't so easy to do. Hope things go well for them. Uh, obviously, no one hopes that there will be a strike. Strikes are, you know, they're a powerful tool, but they are a last resort. And hopefully the CDPR management will come to the table and discuss and the goals of the union will be met without the need for strike action but if there's going to be a strike then we will support the strike 
and uh, I think we probably wouldn't play Cyberpunk on stream anymore if there was a, a strike was to break out. Oh yeah, no, no, we wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't. We fully support the union and their efforts to unionize game development. Hell yeah, there's yeah. no question. Well, we support the union, support the workers, and uh, you can too. You can support the workers financially if you can, if you're able, then you should. It's important. It's a very good cause. Yeah. It's a very good cause. Like you said, game development has is it's kind of a new field. Not that it's new that games are being developed, but it's new that it's this big that there are so many people yeah. who, who work in the field. So it's it's still very much trying to find its footing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's no coincidence that these companies set up offices in countries that don't have a history of unionizing mm -hmm. or aren't very unionized. So uh, initiatives like this to, to bring more fair working conditions are very good and very essential to bring a more fair environment for people working in game development. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it is also cool to see... Um unions that are really radical and take seriously like the theoretical and ideological underpinnings of trade unionism mm. and they're not just like a very generic social democratic trade union they like deeply care about trade unionism as an ideology as well as you know the work itself yeah i was surprised when you said it was a syndicalist like a narco syndicalist i don't I haven't heard of any, outside of the US at least, I hadn't heard of any uh, syndicalist unions in Europe. Yeah, oh, like I said, the Swedish one is SAC, Swedish Workers' Confederation, which is, I think, I don't know if it's the oldest, but it's certainly one of the oldest trade unions in Sweden. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, they've been around for over 100 years. I think my one of my teachers was a member of SAC when oh, nice. uh, in high school because that's kind of the problem with unions is that once they become part of like the status quo then the work of like the opposition to unions goes from trying to stop unionization to creating and encouraging unions that are very passive uh and like declawed and not as radical yeah shall we still be slaves and work for wages it is outrageous has been for ages oh this Lots of gold when we unite to gain our rights. If they resist, we'll use our might. There is no middle ground. This fight must be won. Right.